Hi, I'm Mary Shinuda, private performance chef and founder of Fat Fudge, and you're watching Behind the Brand with Brian Elliott. Hey, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with the incomparable, the unicorn, the amazing Mary Shinuda. Mary, welcome to the show. Oh my gosh, that was so big. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> Can we go back to when you were working the tech job? It sounds like the journey became the destination, right? So you enjoyed the challenge of new things. And then when you had kind of conquered the mountain, you had to go find a different mountain. Mm -hmm. So what changed with food? Because it sounds like you, you found your mountain and then you built a mansion on it, an empire. So the nature of how I work with clients, all my clients are high performers, whether they're professional athletes, tech founders, actors, and they're, they're at the top of their game. And I get hired along with the team that comes in to find the one or 2% competitive advantage we can give them. And that's always a new mountain. It's always exciting. It's okay. so individual. So you're still, you're still doing that just in a different way. Yeah. Okay. And then building a, a CPG company with no experience every day is an, every day is a fire in a mountain. <laughs> and then the other thing I was curious about is, is this, you know, all or nothing, very binary. It's this or it's that it's black or it's white. It's all in or it's not in. I mean, it sounds like, you know, when I plug the toaster and I turn the air conditioner on and I have the something else running, I pop a circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that's what happened to you on the 101. Like mm -hmm. it's overload, system overload and you shut down. So what is that? You think, have you, have you gone into what that is about your personality, your character, your however you wanna describe it? I like to think of myself as really resilient, but sometimes stubbornness comes with the resilience. And I've gotten better over time at being able to identify when it is to, to pull the switch myself versus having the switch pulled for me. Um, I've had, my life has not gone without strife or traumatic events that have formed the kind of woman that I am. I always say I'm the kind of woman I wanted to be when I grew up. So the what doesn't really matter. And I, I wouldn't be that way without this immense sense of mortality and being, um, inspired by that a lot of people in my life are no longer here and a lot of them it's not fair it was too soon it was too young so I think like the powers that be are going to decide otherwise but the only way I feel like I can honor their legacy is to take all of their amazing qualities and infuse them into my personality and and be as happy and fulfilled as I can be um, to honor that and that's really important for me um, but then also I'm hardworking and I'm stubborn and I want to prove that I can do something and I want to make people proud. And so those things can, can conflict sometimes. And mm -hmm. so in the past I would go until I'd burn out. Now I go until I'm almost going to burn out, <laughs> start journey. I'm still learning. Yeah. And where I'm going with that question is like, so how do you, what are some of the signs that you're about to burn out? And then what do you do about it? So how do you recharge? You know, how do you, what are some of the signals? And this is a very common problem. I mean, sure. all of us have the same kind of challenge, I would guess, in some shape or form. Sure. Um, certain signs would be my body feels inflamed. If we want to talk about food, like be, being really aware of your body, your gut is really powerful. Um, I say trust your gut at the end of each of my emails and it's, it's has multiple meanings. So I'll sometimes get a feeling of anxiousness in my stomach or my joints will start to hurt or I won't sleep as well. And sometimes I will ignore that and just like, no, I'm going to push through it. And then I'll miss words when I'm writing an email or I'll be something that is, shouldn't give me emotion is giving me emotion or I isolate. Mm. I don't want to talk to anybody. Um, and before I would just do those things and push aside what I see is happening. Now, as it comes up and I'm aware, I'll be like, that's interesting, let's explore that. Did I really not get enough sleep for something else or am I, am I burning out? Mm -hmm. And nature is huge. I, I started doing peak hikes. I love the fact that you're 14, 15 miles in at elevation. You're so tired, but so happy. And there's no room to think about anything other than get one foot in front of the other. Yeah, also great metaphor to fit in with your whole life <laughs> philosophy. I love um, it. I have certain people that 
uh, they know that if I call them, I don't want your opinion, I don't want your advice, I want you to listen, because I, I, that is what is most powerful for me, is to get it out of my body. Mm. So please just show up and listen. And um, I, being by the ocean, I don't get a lot, I take a lot of vacations, so I take micro vacations. So my environment's really important to me. So when I feel burnt out, I'm gonna walk out to the ocean and remind myself how small I am by compared to everything else. And that the thing that I'm probably feeling won't matter in five or 10 years. And these are things that matter. And that's a 15 minute like relaxation. Um, and then before that, obviously, I, I like to think I have a pretty solid diet. I do my best to take care of my body, boxing, body work, prayer, meditation, mm -hmm. all those tick marks. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and food has become everything, right? It's become literally the fuel that gets you to where you need to go. Talk yeah. about that a little bit. Um, there's food, it will either help you or hurt you. There's no just benign food. I take that really seriously. And the more understanding you have on food, um, the more confident you can become and the more in power you feel and the more compassion you can feel and then with compassion you can solve the world so that's the whole like the bigger grand thing is that and um, diet is so individual and I get really disappointed when I see someone who is being misled by one trend and suffering not understanding that everything in your life can and should be really individualized and so I really want to empower people in that way and it's not a sexy topic but everyone, nobody turns down a, a free meal or a meal in general. And it's just a really great tool to make something tangible and get somebody's trust to then talk about these other topics and how they relate to food. And so when I'm making a meal for an athlete or doing fat fudge, yeah, it's about the food and the synergy of food and the chemistry of food that is really cool. And how are you gonna be faster, stronger, yeah. have more energy? But it's also like, what is that gonna do to you as an individual human? And how are you going to, as a result of feeling your best, move mountains in positive ways in places that I can't even reach. I love this idea of customization because, I mean, it's laughable. You, you'll see an ad or you hear an ad for a medication and it's like, take this medication. However, you know, your ears might fall off or your you know, hair falls out or you, know, you grow another 17 inches, whatever. It's like all these weird side effects. You're like, why would I ever <laughs> like try that? I can't wait for the day that we have customized medicine mm -hmm. that fits our DNA, our biology, you know, that the right dosage, the right absorption level. And I would assume that food is the same kind of idea. I do my best to make what we have available to us, supplement food, modalities of training, individual right now. Like as, as any human that's listening to this interview, you, you have full rights within your power and within your insurance to go to your doctor and say, I want a full pituitary panel, a full panel. I want a full nutrition panel. I wanna know exactly what's going on under the hood. And that's step one. There's, I would say there's like um, levels to it. Level one is I'm just gonna eat healthier. Level two is I'm gonna try these three different diets for a period of time that makes sense where I can see change. Then there's level three doing testing and knowing what's going on. And then there's level four doing the testing, involving the team and getting really, really customized. Mm -hmm. And you can do that now. There's, I mean, it takes work, trial and error. It takes finding the right doctor. It's not without its challenges. I do tell people that when you're looking for a doctor, you don't want to find a doctor that's necessarily smarter than you, but a doctor that is just as curious as you are to go down that route with you. Um, so there's nothing stopping you from beginning to do that customization. And where do you find people like that? Because that's not the general medical community, right? Most of the doctors, you know, you show up and she says, you know, oh, you're fine. You know, just drink more water or something. You know, you need more sleep. Yeah, just like dating. It's an interview process. Okay. So if you can get a recommendation from someone, start there, see that doctor. Your gut will tell you if this doctor jives with you or not. Yeah. And you gotta go see another doctor, another doctor. There's so many resources online for doctors that um, believe in the more of the customizable stuff. And Is that a holistic doctor or like what kind of doctor, general practitioner? So in, in my world for myself personally and for my clients, we have your primary care physician on the same string as the holistic doctor, on the same string as the trainer, on the same string yeah. as your OB. Like they all, that is a team. And if someone doesn't want to be on that string, sorry, you can't be on the team because everyone needs to know what they're doing. Yeah. And I believe there's a time and a place for Western and Eastern medicine. 
Um, and there are websites dedicated to finding people of each nature and based on what they believe in. And there's a lot of doctors now that will do um, Skype consultations and put in the lab work to you. So you don't have to mm -hmm. feel like, well, I live in the middle of nowhere. You're in LA, you're so lucky, da 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 da. I'm like, true, don't wanna take that, that benefit away. But now it is all about customization and now they're making tools and technologies. Like you, there's now apps for concierge doctors like on yeah. call, it's crazy. Yeah. There's so much conversation just around that topic. Um, I could probably talk about that for a long time for selfish reasons, but I mean, that's been my experience too is um, there are some great doctors and some not so great doctors. Um, honestly, for me, the jury is still out. Like I feel like the medical community in general knows a lot, but we're still just guessing intelligently. Sure. Um, and I've felt like that guinea pig, or I've felt like that um, test case trying to figure out my own right. biology, my own. And at some point you realize that you have to be part of that process too. You yeah. can't just be the guinea pig. Yeah. So my doctor now, if I tell him something isn't right, even if the test shows something slightly off, he's like, I'm gonna trust how you feel over what this test says. Right. And it took a long time to find a doctor like that, where he's like, technically you're the boss. So what test you want, we're gonna do. And I mean, that's, so I have a, a non-cancerous pituitary adenoma. It's a, a tumor on my pituitary gland. And it took us a couple of years to find, cause like something just wasn't right. My hormones were slightly off, my sleep was slightly off. And through the whole process, he's like, Things aren't alarming in your test results, but you're telling me you feel this way, we're going to keep looking. Yeah, something's gotta be wrong. And then we found Herbert, is what I named him. And without that curiosity, without him trusting me that I know my body, that I wouldn't know that that existed and be able to treat it now.